Hello everyone and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. This is Colin and today we're going to do a playthrough of Black Sonata. Now currently this game is a print and play. So you can find it, print it out, cut it out, and play it. It is a solo only game so you can only play it solo. And the game lasts you about 30 minutes. And I do have to say it is the only solitaire hidden movement and deduction game I've ever played. And it works really well. I'm really pumped to show you guys this game. I was fortunate enough to be sent a review copy because this game is going to be seeking funding on Kickstarter for a published version, which would be sweet because then you don't have to print everything and cut everything out. Instead, you can just get the game and play it yourself. So what we're going to do here is we'll do the full playthrough here and setup. So if you want to just jump to the playthrough, I'll put in the description below links so that you know where to go if you want to just jump right to the playthrough or if you want to see how to set up the game. With that, let's get going. The first thing you want to do when setting up the game is place the board in the center of the table. Now the goal of the game is we are going to be trying to catch the Dark Lady. Every time we catch her, we find a clue about her, and if we can determine the three traits about her through logic, probably a lot of guessing, <laughs> because yeah, I still haven't won this game yet and I've played it four times, uh, but yeah, between mostly logic and some guessing, if we can guess her three traits, we win the game. But if we run out of time, or if we run out of fog cards, we lose the game. So here we have our pawn, and we get to start in one of these different locations that you see here. I like St. Paul, since hey, I live right outside of St. Paul in Minnesota, so I might as well start at St. Paul's. <laughs> You want to place these deduction tokens and then these tracking tokens to the side of the board. These tokens are the different symbols that we are trying to guess for the Dark Lady. So the Dark Lady might have these three icons here and that denotes what type of person she is. For example, this music note means that she'd be musical. This heart note means that she was a promiscuous lady. So we're trying to determine which three of these characteristics match our dark lady. You want to make sure you shuffle up your fog cards, and your fog cards will have a question mark on the back, and then your location cards you do not need to shuffle. You can simply have them out because you'll be using these when you're trying to find if the dark lady is in your location. Next, what we want to do is determine who the Dark Lady is. So the first thing that you'll do is in your first few games, they do not recommend that you have the Dark Lady be one of these three Sage cards because those ones are a little bit more difficult. So I'm just going to take them out of the deck. I'm going to take the rest of these, give them a good shuffle. I'm not looking and we're going to pick this one. Okay. So this blue card is going to be the Dark Lady. Then what we'll do is we'll simply slide this card underneath here. And I kind of think of it like Clue. You remember how Clue in the center of the board, you've got the person, place, and thing? So that's kind of what you have here. This is the solution. You're trying to solve that. And when you think you're right, you'll flip it over and see that you're wrong. <laughs> Then what you do with the remaining clue cards is you want to make sure the other card that matches the specific flower type of the Dark Lady, you want to have on top of the clue deck. The rest of these, we just need to make sure to shuffle them up like so. And each time we find the Dark Lady as we play through the game, we'll get to reveal one of these and it'll help us learn a little bit more about who the Dark Lady is. So we'll place someone on top like so. Next, what you want to do is set up your stealth deck. And this is one of the coolest things of this game. I love how this works. So up at the top of the card, you can see there's some alphabet letters and same down here in the bottom. These are eight different movement sequences, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna pick one. So I already did. I'm gonna pick the second one from the top. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna gather all of the cards and you're gonna put them in alphabetical order. So you can see Z, Y, X, W, V, U, blah, 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 all the way to A. Okay, you're going to have six extra cards left over where they had a dash here. You won't include them in your stealth deck. It is imperative, though, to make sure that you have these in order because the key about this game is that the Dark Lady will move each round, but she'll only ever move one location at a time. She's not going to be jumping across the board. And so that can help you when trying to guess where she's going to be next, especially if you catch her once and you're trying to catch her a second time. You can go, well, she's got to be around that location, right? So you got to make sure to have them in that alphabetical order. Then what we'll do is we'll take that deck flip it straight over and cut it in half or just cut it at some spot of the deck it does not have to be in half but what's important is we're not starting at letter a 
This does not disrupt her path, but allows us to have a random beginning location for her. Finally, what you want to do is grab this card and place it at the bottom of the deck with the two facing up. If we go through this deck three times, so the first time we go through it, we'll go from two to a one. Second time we go through it, we'll go one to a zero. And then the next time we see that zero, we lose the game. So that's another way you can lose this game is if you run out of time. And we'll place that at the bottom of this stealth deck. And with that, we are ready to start the game. Each turn will consist of two steps. The first step will be to update the Dark Lady's location. So the first thing that you'll do is you'll pick up your stealth deck, grab that top card, and slide it on the bottom of the deck. Now, this card tells us where the Dark Lady might be, any location that has this mask. On the board, you'll see there are three locations with that mask icon. And so what I've done is I've used our tracking tokens to notate that, to say she's either here, here, or here. Next, we move to our activation, and we can choose one of these actions. We can either move our pawn to a different location. We can search for the Dark Lady if we are in a place where she has, we have one of our tracking tokens. Or if there is a fog card on top of the deck, we can use that card as well. And finally, of course, you can always pass. Do nothing, just stay where you are, and then flip the next stealth card. So right now, I am currently in St. Paul's, and unfortunately, the Dark Lady's not there. I can, for my one action, move to the Black Friars. Now, what's important, at the beginning of the game, you want to make sure to track all the different locations that you go to. Because if you go to every location on the board, you can, for a free action, grab a clue card. So I've already been to St. Paul, so I'm going to set that one aside. And now I've been to the Black Friars, so I'm going to grab that location card and set it aside as well. If I get to every location, I get a free clue. So now I'm in a location where I think that Dark Lady might be. But unfortunately, she gets to activate again, and she very likely will move. <laughs> so let's see what happens. We'll flip the next card, place this on the bottom. Now she's in locations where there are tree icons. Looking at the board, that would mean she'd either be in Clarkenwell or here in Shoredith. And you know, there is a chance that she, if she had been in Blackfriars first, she might have gone all the way up here to Clarkenwell. Hmm. I think although I could go here to Clarkenwell, I'm really worried that all she's going to do is keep moving. I'm going to be one step behind her. So I'm going to hope that maybe if she is in Clarkenwell, she's going to come back here to Blackfriars. So because of that, I'm actually going to do nothing. I'm not going to move. I'm just going to stay where I am. I'm going to simply pass. We then should update the Dark Lady's location. Okay, now it's a location that has this house icon. Well, look at that. There are four locations that have the house icon. So she could have gone a lot of different places. But do you see? I'm in Blackfriars, which has that location or that icon. So I think what I'm going to do for my action is I'm going to search. How you do a search is pretty cool. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab a fog card and you're just going to slide it underneath here so you can't see what icon is underneath this card because you don't want to know where she's going next. You're then going to grab your location card, set it here, grab this top card, put it on top of the location card and give it a flip. And oh, <laughs> I've never had that happen. I had a one in four chance and look. I found her. You see how we see her here? That means we have caught the Dark Lady. We're going to learn a little clue about her. For I have sworn, thee fair and thought thee bright, who art as black as hell, as dark as night. You know, I have to say my Shakespeare is pretty terrible. I have no idea what that's from. But <laughs> what I'm really happy about is we get a clue. I do also want to mention, this card now is gone for the rest of the game. It has now been replaced by that fog card. So we're never going to be able to find her. I shouldn't say in Blackfriars because she might move back into it again. But we're never going to find her with that specific card again. Because essentially, we no longer have that clue. So let's reveal our top clue card. Ooh, cool. Okay, so what we see here, this has three symbols on the side. So let's say this had been the card that we had picked as the Dark Lady. This is what we're trying to find, these three um, specific icons. But this isn't the one we're doing. We're doing the other blue flower card. And we can see over here, the blue flower card, there's a one there. That means one of these three icons is correct for our Dark Lady. Only one. 
<laughs> if it had been the green, two of these would be right. If we had the rows, either zero would be right or two of the three would be right. So what we're essentially going to do is as we continue to gain clues, we're going to try and use logic and determine what those three characteristics of the Dark Lady is. Now the final step is we have to advance the stealth deck by one card for each clue card we have. So right now, that's one. So we'll take this card, put it down on the bottom like so. Cool. Okay. So that'll end our turn. So we've got a little information about her, but not a ton. <laughs> so to start the next round, we will grab this card. Oh, she's now at some place drinking a beer. Looking at the board here, there's only two locations where she could grab a beer slash probably it's wine or maybe champagne or something like that. Uh, but they're way over here. Now you might be going, well, how would that work if we just caught her here? But don't forget, we discarded one card. Remember, we, we or I shouldn't say discarded, we put to the bottom of the stealth deck one card because we had one clue after our search. That means she probably moved two spaces. Which, if we, she was here, one, two, I think we know that she's in Southwark. I think. <laughs> I'm saying that we know that, but I don't know. So there is a good chance that she might move to the Liberty of the Clink next round. So let's go there. And because we're now moving there, the Liberty of the Clink is another location we've gone to. And remember, if we've gone to all the locations once, we get a free clue card. Now let's go and flip the next card. Okay, money bags. So now she moved to a place with money. Well, I was hoping she went to the Liberty of the Clink, but my guess is she moved to the London Bridge. I mean, maybe if I did something wrong, she could be here at the Corn Hill, but those are the only two locations. So I'm thinking London Bridge. So why don't we go to Southwark, chase her down, and we can get rid of that location card. I shouldn't say get rid of it, but move it to the, lo uh, to the location cards that we've already been to. And we're getting one step closer to getting a free clue card. Let's now flip to our next stealth card. Okay, and it is a cross. I'm assuming the cross stands for a church. And you can see there's lots of churches here, which makes sense in the 1600s. There was a ton of churches. But look at this. This one very likely moved back to the south work right where we are. So I definitely think we're going to do a search action. So what we'll do is we'll grab a fog card. We'll slide it underneath here like so, so we can't see. We'll then take this card, place it on top of Southwark, give it a flip. Yeah, see, we totally tracked her. I hate from hate away she threw and saved my life saying, not you. I hope you guys are okay I'm doing that. <laughs> and really like the flavor text, having a little bit of um, Shakespeare in this. That yeah, makes it kind of fun. So, but okay, don't forget, we'll flip this back over. We now remove this card from the game. And I'm just going to do it so I don't forget. We now are going to have two clues. So we have to take the top two and put them at the bottom of the deck. So now it's going to be harder to find out where she is. But revealing another clue card is definitely going to help. Okay. So we know that our blue dark lady will either have the crown, the baby rattle, or music. One of those three. And you see here, one of those three she's going to have as well. And I see music notes on both of them. So, heh. It's giving me a little bit of information. Still not sure that it's going to be... I, I need a lot more information than that. So hopefully we can keep tracking her. So we finished our turn. Let's move the deck. Okay, another cross. I mean, maybe after drawing three cards, she came all the way back here to Southwark. But she could have also gone all the way up here to Bishop's Gate. If, and actually one, two, three, she could have gone to St. Paul. I think, oh no, one, two, three, gosh, she could have gone to any of them. So if we don't find her at Southwark, we've lost her. I don't know where she is. So I think let's do our search. And then if we haven't found her, we're just going to start uh, grabbing for straws. I should mention, there are only 10 of these fog cards. I've already used two. I'm going to use my third one here. And remember, once they're all gone and we need to place another one, we lose the game. So, yeah, I'm hurrying my demise. But I kind of have to do that in order to find out where she is. Come on. We need some luck here. We, you know she wanted to come back to Southwark. She didn't think we would stay there. Nah, we lost her. See, this shows no icon of her silhouette. Yeah, we totally missed her. So that's a real bummer, because what we're going to have to do, flip this back over, we'll remove this card from the game, and now we have two clues, so we're going to have to 
move two cards down, and I'm telling you, we have totally lost her. <laughs> okay, we'll start the next round. Okay, she's at a location that has the home icon. So looking at the board, she could be in all of these four locations. The Clink, Liberty of the Clink, Black Friars, the Cripple Gate, and Bishop's Gate. I think, although there might be a chance that she's actually there, it's silly to go back. I think let's keep going so we can maybe earn our free clue. So let's go to London Bridge. And then I can find that location card and put it in the spot where I have already visited. From here, let's continue on. Oh, oh, she's back to a place getting another drink. I honestly think at this point she's starting to tease me. This is usually what happens. I usually start off pretty well. I'm going, great, great. And then I lose her. And then I spend the rest of the game trying to find her. Look at that. Either side of me. Come on. Uh, let's just keep going, right? So let's go to East Cheap. We'll take that location card and put it in the spot where we've already gone to. That means we only have five more locations we haven't gone to. Okay, come on. We know that she is going to be not where we are. Yeah, we're not in a location with a home. Taunting me again. Look, all not where I am. Now, I do want to mention something. You do not have to use these tracker tokens. And when you're playing solo, you probably aren't going to want to play with it. I like playing with it on camera so you guys can kind of see where her potential movements are. But you also might find it helpful. You might see, oh, this one is looking like it's moving over here. It looks like these would make sense that she's in this location, you know? So you can definitely use it. You just don't have to. And we're going to move to Bishop's Gate. So I'm going to do that because, hey, might as well get another location checked off. We'll draw the next card. And back to the money bags. I am pretty certain she is just teasing me. <laughs> so do I want to go to Shoreditch, Shoreditch or do I want to go to Cornhill? Both of them I need to go to. <sighs> I mean, if she's in one of these two locations, <sighs> there's like no way she's going to go to Shoreditch. So let's, or do I just stay where I am and maybe see if I can catch her? You know what? Let's hold off. We're not going to move. We're going to stay there one round and see if maybe she will come to us. I have a good feeling about this. <laughs> hey, look, that's the right symbol at least, but that's there are four locations that have that symbol, so I could be totally wrong. So if you think about it, I think we're almost guaranteed to be right on this one just because she was either over here or here, and then the next ones are way over here or there. So that makes me think she has to have been over here to move to here because that's the ones that are adjacent. If that makes any sense, <laughs> we'll find out if I'm right. We'll grab another one of these fog cards, flip it underneath, place this here. Come on, we got to be right, right? Nope, we're totally wrong. <laughs> yeah. So shall thou feed on death that feeds on men, and death once dead, there's no more dying then. Okay, well, that was kind of depressing. I obviously am failing at logic, so we again have to move forward two cards. Okay, perfect. And then we'll start the next round. Flip this. Okay, she's back at a church. Oh boy, there are four churches. We're at Bishop's Gate. <laughs> We're going to run out of fog cards. I always seem to run out that way, but we might as well search again. We're there. So let's do a search. Do you guys have a good feeling about this? Because the last time I totally did and it didn't work. Let's see. Come on. Nope. Man, we totally failed again. <laughs> so... We'll get rid of that card, and we have to move two cards up, and we're almost one time through the stealth deck. Let's start that next turn. Okay, now she's in a boat location. Well, at this point, 100% lost. I'm just going to go and get a free clue card. What do you guys think? So let's go to Shortith. We only have to go to three more locations, and then we can get our free clue card. We'll jump the deck to the next one. She's back to a church. The three that I have left are Cornhill, Cripplegate, and Clerkenwell. So let's move over here to Cripplegate. So we've gotten that one. And then it's going to take me two more turns because I can go to Cornhill, or actually three. One, two, three. And then we can get our free, free clue card. Let's give this card a flip. She's back into a money location. So I think from there, we're actually going to come over here to Clerkenwell. And then we two more turns and we'll get to Cornhill. We'll give the card a flip. Ah, look at that. We're already one way through. 
So I'll flip this. This will also go underneath here. And now she's back at a location that has a church. And you know what? I'm at a location with a church. Let's go searching. We'll grab our fog card, slide underneath here, put this here, and we will see that we failed. <laughs> Then will I swear beauty herself is black, and all they foul that thy complexion lack. I have no idea what that means. I am so not an English major. <laughs> okay, I'm trying not to cheat here. There we go. It's kind of hard to grab these cards. Flip it back over. We'll remove this. And we still only have two clues, so these two get put on the bottom. Oh, and now we've got a tree. Okay, so we're at a location that actually has a tree with Clark and Well here. So I think we might as well do another search. We only have three fog cards left though, so we're running out of time. So let's grab that fog card, slide it underneath, place this here, and flip it over. Boom! We caught her. Yeah! Okay, so we're going to get our third clue. So that means we're going to have to move one, two, three cards down at the bottom and let's see what we find. We have the rose card here and okay so for the blue flower either she has two of these icons or none of them. Yeah I mean maybe some of you logic freaks can figure it out right now but I can't. Not with that. This telling me one of these is right and this one telling me one of them is right. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll just grab these three and keep chugging along. We'll flip to the next card, and you can see. So now that we have three clues, every time we do a search, we're gonna move three through the deck. And then when we find another clue, we're gonna move four through the deck. So you're gonna go through that deck faster and faster and faster. Not to mention, you're gonna run out of these so quick. <laughs> For money bags, we have Cornhill and London Bridge. So we're gonna go to Cripplegate, but next round we can go to Cornhill, and then at any time we can get our free clue. Okay, let's flip it. Oh, we have a fog card, so we finally have another option. So if the top card of your stealth deck is a fog card, you cannot search for the, for the lady, but you can instead take the top card from the fog deck and slide it face down beneath the top card of the stealth deck. Then we can turn this fog card over and perform the action, and we have to perform the action. If we can't perform the action, we lose the game. So we're actually using one of these, but here's the thing. This one that we use will then go to the bottom of this deck. So I think we're gonna do it. So what we're gonna do is just slide this underneath so we can't see what the next icon is, and we're gonna flip this one over. Discard the top card from the fog deck. <laughs> that was terrible. So we're gonna discard this one. Our fog deck now has only one fog card in it, and that's the one that we just drew. Wow, that stunk. Oh, that was a terrible idea. Okay, so we'll go to the next round. Oh, okay, she's back in a money location. Well, what do you say we moved to Corn Hill? That's going to be our last location, and for a free action, we can gain a clue. I'm not going to do that yet, because remember, if I do that now, we're going to accelerate the deck. So we'll do it when I think we're getting close to making a determination of where she is. Let's give this card a move. Oh yeah, she is out getting some drinks. So with this, I think I'm gonna just stay where I am, hoping maybe that this is where she actually is and she'll move into Cornhill. I guess we'll find out. Let's give this card a flip. Oh, we have another fog card. Okay, do we take a chance? Do we try and do this action? Because remember, if we do the action, we will still put that card on the bottom of the fog deck so we won't lose it. But is it too risky? Is it too risky? Ah, oh, what the hey? What's life without a little risk? Let's do it. <laughs> so we know this is going to be a bad fog card next time. Let's see about this one. Discard this card and reveal a new clue card. Whoa! That is awesome! Okay, so we discard this though. That means we have no more fog cards. And we'll reveal another clue card right here. We'll flip this. For the blue, she has one of these three icons. And well, you guys, I just lost the game. <laughs> because even though I have my four clues, and I could get a free clue right now, so I'd get another clue, a fifth clue, which is right here. Great. She has one of these three. 
I might be able to puzzle out what her three icons are, what her three characteristics are, but I need to be able to search for her one more time. But my fog deck is empty. I cannot do a search action. And since I can't, because I need to have a fog card to place underneath that card that I would be searching at. So I just lost the game. Bummer. Um, but I actually think I wasn't too far away. With five of these, I think we might have been able to do it. Actually, you know, it'd be kind of fun. I'll look at this and you guys, what I'll do with these five clues out, the first person that can guess correctly what she is, I will give you a $50 gift card to Amazon. So you can go ahead and buy yourself a game. Or if you're thinking that you like this game enough and you want to back it, I'll back it for you and ship it to your house. How about that? Okay. So look at these and make your guess. And the first one that I see on there that's right, I'll let you know that you're the winner. And yeah, that'll be pretty sweet. And that's it. That is Black Sonata. I hope you guys enjoyed the game. It's a lot of fun. It's hard. I still haven't won. <laughs> I don't know if I ever will win, but I do also want to mention after this, now I'm sending this over to Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire. Make sure to check out her video. See if she does things smarter than me because she probably will. <laughs> so thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you at the next stop.